Alright, hey guys, this is Daniel again, back for this part two of uh, this how to make an RPG game tutorial series. Um, I apologize, I haven't been quicker on this. My computer crashed and I had to rebuild it. So, um, that's why this doesn't look exactly like the one you guys probably have, but uh, it doesn't matter at this point. So, what we're going to get into now is kind of getting the character to move around, because obviously it's a big... Um, a big part of this. So we already have a basic just character guy um, and we've got some little objects over here in our camera and the light. Um, and that's good for now. Um, but basically what we're going to want to do let me get these guys off this real quick. There we go. Okay. Um, what we're going to want to do is add some movement to our character. So the easiest way to do that unfortunately isn't the best way. But I'll go ahead and kind of go over it real quick because it's an important thing you need to learn um, for later. Basically, down here you've got what's called the, uh, don't want to misquote it here, logic editor, alright? And you can turn any window into a logic editor. Just click the little tab here and go into the logic editor one, alright? Let me put this one back real quick. So, but basically what the logic editor does is it allows you to control objects or events in uh, your game through these little blocks uh, that you'll see in a second here. So the first thing we're going to do is just make one that listens for when the keyboard a keyboard event happens. Okay, we're just going to call some W because that's the key we're going to be pressing. And then here you've got all kinds of different settings and cool stuff like that. But basically, all we need to do is click here and then press the button we want it to be listening for. So W or the forward key. Alright, and then over here in the actuator area, we're going to add one called motion. Alright, and it sounds pretty simple, and it is. Uh, all that motion does, essentially... Um, let me turn this back off. There we go. Uh, this is what yours will look like right now. All that motion does is move your character, okay? Either on a local axis or on a world axis if you uncheck that, okay? Uh, or rotate it depending on what you want it to do. So in this case, we want it to move forward. So that's forward as it's on its y axis. Okay. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little arrow that'll move it up by 0.1. Now when we press P, press W, you can see we move forward. Of course, the problem is we moved right through that block, which isn't exactly what we wanted. So what we're going to do to um, fix that is we're going to add physics. Alright, so go ahead and we'll drag our guy up a little bit so he can fall, because right now he just kind of hangs out up there. Um, in the real world, of course, he'd fall. So, what we're going to do is go in here in your little uh, properties tab with your player selected. And we're going to come over here to the physics tab, and we're going to change the physics type from static to dynamic. Now there's a couple different settings you can use in here and they all have different purposes and different advantages and disadvantages. But for this we're going to use dynamic and that's because if you use rigid body it looks more realistic. If you use rigid body, I want to make sure you have collision bound box set. Um, if you use rigid body he bounces around and rolls realistically. But if you imagine a character inside of that box he wouldn't be doing that. Okay, He's always going to stay upright so we don't want it to do that. Dynamic means that it'll slide around and move around, but it won't be rotated by the physics, which is what we want. Alright, so now all of a sudden you notice we have a whole bunch more settings down here. Um, so let's go ahead and try using our code, or not code, but the little logic bricks we've already used. Go ahead and press W, and you notice we run into it, and we stop. But when we let go, we come back. And that's a bad thing, because obviously if you hit something, you don't want to always bounce off of it. So, how do we fix that? Well, it's not too terribly difficult. Um, all we have to do is change our motion type here from simple motion to servo control. Um, and then we're going to choose the velocity in which direction we want it to go, and then the minimum speed and maximum speed in that direction. Okay? Um, and basically, this is just a more controlled way of doing it for the game engine. Uh, it doesn't quite, it just doesn't work exactly the same, exactly the same as the simple motion. Um, and it just works a lot better for our, what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and in the linear velocity, um, let's put that at 5, the maximum at 50, 
and the minimum can stay at zero. Let's try that out, see how that works. There we go. And nice you notice we hit it when we let go. We don't bounce. It's perfect. Um, but here's one issue. If you hold down the W key while you're falling, you'll stop falling until you let go, and then you'll fall again, and then and that's kind of a problem. We don't want that. We want gravity to always have effect on you. So the easy way to get around this, just check this little Z button, and all of a sudden it allows the Z axis to be moved when it's messed with. So all of a sudden that doesn't happen. There we go. It's a little bit counterintuitive because you'd think all of a sudden your minimum and maximum Z speed are zero, so it'd have to stay in the you know center. Um, but actually it just frees up the Z axis so that it can be manipulated while this is open. Um, if you had another... Yeah, anyways, so we'll get into that later. So, I like to name all mine the same just so I can look at them and see what they do. Um, basically, we're going to do the exact same thing for the S one now. So, S key, add a new actuator, um, motion, do, 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 S, there we go. I'm going to connect these two up, name that one S as well. Alright, and then go in here to servo control again. Activate the Y. And this time, let's see if I can get this right. I think we're going to do negative 5 here. And negative 50. Oops. 0 there. And maybe it's, it's either negative 50 here or negative 50 in the minimum. We'll have to figure it out. Let's see. Alright, that's not it then. Let's try this again. Negative 5. 0. Negative 50. I always have to kind of mess around with this the first couple. There we go. That looks better. So now you can see we can move back and forth. Um, so the end result here is negative 5 in the Y position, maximum at 0, minimum at negative uh, 50. And then go ahead and check the Z again. And then our last two are actually really easy um, because since this is going to be an RPG game, uh, just a simple one, we really don't need to worry about like strafing like we would if we were doing a shooter or something like that. Instead what we'll do is we're going to make it turn the character. Um, yeah, we'll make it turn the character. So, in order to do that, we don't even have to use the servo controls, we just come over here to rotations, and this is how many degrees, uh, I think it's per frame, um, which Blender naturally locks the flame, frame. Uh, I think it's at 60 or else 30. I want to say 30, or maybe 25. I don't know, I think you can change it in here. Uh, let's see if it'll... Yeah, frames per second, that's 60 right now. Um, so it'll try to keep that up across the board. So basically what we're going to do is rotation. Just add maybe... We'll do 2. Okay, 2 degrees per second. Or per um, frame. And that's looking pretty good there. So you can see we can turn, and it's responsive. And we can run into things and slide off of them. Jolly good. Alright, let's make one more for the other direction turning and our controls will be pretty much finished. D, there we go. Go ahead and add another motion controller there. Alright, and this one we're going to do negative 2 on the Z axis. And now we should have movement. There we go. So we can run around now our little level here. Um, but just a little bit of playing around and you'll start noticing some things. For one, when you let go of the W key, you skate like you're on ice. And while that might be what you want in some levels, on this level I don't think that's what we want. We want it to be grass. You don't normally skid on grass. So how do we fix this? Well, it's actually a little easier than you'd think. Um, when I first got into the game engine stuff, I ran into this problem, and I got so frustrated because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, but it's actually a little bit simpler than I thought it was. All you have to do is select your object that you're colliding with that's sliding too much, so in this case, the floor. Uh, go into your Materials tab. Scroll on down here, and there should be one that says Physics. Here we go. Um, if you unmark that, you just slide right through, which I think is kind of funny considering it's still getting the physics for the object, just not the material, but hey, whatever. Uh, and then friction. This is where you can change how much friction you have. So at 0.5, we can go, and then we let go, and we go about that far. Okay. Um, but if we change friction up to about 5, all of a sudden, 
We speed up, and we stop. We speed up, and we stop. There we go. And, uh, of course, you can change any of these settings if you want. Um, you can make it do different things, however you want to do it. It's your game. Um, but these are the settings that I've found that work pretty well for me. So, alright. So in our next video, uh, we'll talk about um, how to get some camera movement and then uh, designing a first simple little test level just so we can kind of get some real